Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're glad you've joined us for this live webinar, Counteracting Tumor Invasion of Antibody Immunity. My name is Jessica Ladebush of AVCAM, and I'll be moderating today's session. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website and provider of virtual events and webinars advancing scientific collaboration and learning. It's brought to you today by AVCAM. As an innovator in reagents and tools, AppCam's purpose is to serve life science researchers globally to achieve their mission faster. Providing the research and clinical communities with tools and scientific support, we offer highly validated biological binders and assays to address important targets and critical biological pathways. To learn more, visit www.abcam.com. So now let's get started. You can pose questions to the speaker during the presentation while they're still fresh in your mind. To do so, simply type them into the Q&A box, which will open when you click the green Q&A button at the lower left-hand side of the presentation window. All questions will be answered after the presentation. To enlarge the slide window, click on the screen icon in the lower right-hand corner of the slide window. If you experience technical problems seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on the support button found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by clicking on the green Q&A button at the lower left-hand side. This is an educational webinar and offers free continuing education credits. After the webinar is over, please click on the CE button located in the bottom left-hand corner of your webpage and follow the process of obtaining your credits. I now present today's speaker, Dr. Ahn. Dr. Ahn is a professor of molecular medicine, the Robert A. Welch Distinguished University Chair in Chemistry, and director of the Texas Therapeutics Institute at the, Institu excuse me, at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. His laboratory focuses on cancer antibody drug resistance mechanisms, biomarkers for cancer therapeutic antibodies, and antibody drug discovery targeting cancer and infectious diseases. He also directs a therapeutic monoclonal antibody lead optimization and development core facility funded by the Cancer Prevention and Research Institute of Texas. Previously, he served as Chief Scientific Officer at Epitomics, Inc. and was Director of Biologics Research at Merck Research Laboratories. He is a Fellow of the Society for Industrial Microbiology and Biotechnology and is well published in the field of antibody drug discovery including the award-winning book, Therapeutic Monoclonal Antibodies, From Bench to Clinic. Dr. Ahn will now begin his presentation. Hello, uh, hi everyone for joining this uh, webinar today. So what I'm going to do is uh, to tell you uh, uh, a story about the whole tumor can invasion antibody immunity. This is a pretty new field, so I'm uh, going to uh, slowly explain to you some of the uh, uh, research, uh, research activities from my laboratory in collaboration with uh, Joshi and Joshi. So uh, we know uh, that uh, uh, immune invasion of uh, 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 T cell immunity, cell immunity is a hallmark of cancer. But uh, we know little about uh, cancer invasion of uh, the humoral immunity, uh, that's uh, uh, antibody immunity. So the, in the clinic, we observed that uh, uh, antibody therapeutics uh, 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 became resisted by the cancer after treatment. So therefore, uh, the tumor has a way to evade antibody immunity. This also including uh, autoantibodies targeting tumor-associated allergies. So the scientific question we ask is, uh, are there uh, uh, underlying mechanisms of a tumor invasion of antibody immunity? If that's the case, uh, how we uh, counteract to, uh, to the, uh, the invasion of antibody immunity? So let's uh, uh, start by reviewing the antibody structure. Antibody uh, has its a complex heterotetramer with a molecular weight of uh, more than 150 kilodaltons. So antibodies is composed of two distinct uh, sections or fragments. Uh, you see the uh, wall-shaped structure has the variable region or fab fragment. That's where 
antibody gets its uh, uh, targets. And uh, that antibody has this FC uh, domain that uh, is heavily glycosylated. Uh, the glycosylation uh, play a big role in the antibody immune effector function and as, as well as the long half-life of the antibody. Actually, uh, glyco engineering has become a major and active field uh, to uh, modulate antibody uh, uh, immune effector function uh, using therapeutic antibody design. And the antibody also uh, engages the CYQ uh, uh, receptor that's mediate uh, complement, uh, mediate uh, cellular cytotoxicity, uh, which is responsible mostly for the bacterial uh, uh, clearance. And the antibodies, the FC region also engage FC gamma receptors, uh, both cancer cells and immune cells, that also mediate uh, immune uh, mediated uh, functions such as the ADCC, uh, stand for antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Um, and uh, to add to the complexity, uh, antibodies is RGG uh, also type. You have uh, 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 RGG1, RGG2, RGG3, and RGG4. Different uh, uh, other types of RGG has different uh, uh, immune effector functions. For example, RGG1 is actively engaged the immune uh, system, and RGG2 and RGG4 are less so. Uh, RGG3 has a very low NAC, also the H. It's not very stable, so it's not used for therapeutic antibody design, but RGG1, 2, and 4 has been used in the uh, therapeutic antibody uh, drug development. Uh, last but not least, antibodies, the FC region also engage the uh, FC uh, uh, CRN uh, receptor, that's also uh, uh, known as uh, the neonatal receptor or the BRABO receptor. That's where uh, uh, contribute to the uh, long half-life of the antibody. A human antibody has about uh, 21 days of half-life in, uh, in circulation. So to summarize, the antibody has two uh, distinct uh, segments. The first segment is the fiber fragment that engages the target, and the FC region uh, engages the immune system. The fiber fragment and the FC are linked by this uh, uh, region called the H region. So here, uh, uh, let's take an uh, antibody called the tritutumab also known as the Herceptin, uh, which is a drug uh, targeting HER2, which is a tyrosine kinase receptor. So it's uh, overexpressed in about 20 to 25 percent of breast cancer patients. So Tachumab has been a very successful drug to, uh, uh, for the HER2 overexpressing uh, uh, breast cancer patients. So how Tachumab work in terms of mode of action is the fiber fragment engages the HER2 receptor. By inhibition of the HER2 signaling, then can block and inhibit tumor cell growth. Uh, on top of that, so the FC part of the molecule uh, can engage the FC gamma receptor. Uh, in this case, uh, it's very well established that tritutumab can induce the antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Uh, recently, in my lab, actually discovered a new mode of action for uh, for uh, tritutumab. In this case, you see the cancer cell overexpresses HER2. Tritutumab is a fat portion of the fragment it engages the HER2 receptor. If you see part of the uh, of the um, uh, tritutumab engages the if the gamma receptor or uh, immune cells or factor cells such as uh, natural killer cells. So by by the engaged FC gamma receptor will activate the immune cell. The immune cell will create cytokines such as utopheral gamma. The utopheral gamma will engage the, uh, the utopheral gamma receptor as a cancer cell, which will activate uh, the transcription uh, 
uh, uh, factor uh, state of war. So for the state of war, we will migrate to the nucleus that blocks HER2 uh, uh, transcription. Uh, so this is actually the first time we know that uh, the HER2 receptor down regulation by the tritutal map is actually engaged by the immune factor function. So it's contributed by the FC part of the molecule. Also recently in my laboratory, we uh, discovered that uh, traditional map can not only engage the ADCC through the immune factor function, that's the antibody dependent uh, cellular cytotoxicity, but also can engage uh, uh, ADCP, that's antibody dependent uh, phagocytosis. So in this experiment, I show you one slide that uh, if you label the target cell, that's the high HER2 expression breast cancer cell, cell like BT474, and you label that cell like in red color. And then you label the uh, immune effect cell, in this case macrophage in gray. And uh, uh, you also need to activate the uh, immune effect cell by utero gamma and uh, LPS. So as I show you on the left panel of the image, you say traditional map can mediate uh, uh, the phagocytosis of a cancer cell by the macrophage. You say the red cell are uh, engulfed by the blue or the gray uh, macrophage. So on the middle panel, you say the other type of control, you do not say that. Again, I uh, show you that uh, uh, the traditional map actually rely on its immune factor function for its uh, part of its efficacy, its case of uh, high HER2 uh, expression cancer cells. And uh, so uh, this just summarizes here. So for traditional map to work to block tumor cell growth, you have uh, uh, four uh, discovered uh, 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 mode of actions. So number one is uh, the antibody, the, uh, the fab fragment of the antibody uh, engages a cancer cell that block HER2 signaling. So that's one mechanism. But more importantly, if you say part of the tritutal map, which immediate ADCC, ADCP, and also uh, HER2 receptor down regulation at the trans uh, transcription level, also contribute to uh, the mode of action of a tritutal map. So we know uh, uh, every row tritutal map has been a very successful drug for uh, high HER2 expression breast cancer, that's the card for about 25% of the breast cancer patients. But uh, we know that only about half of uh, the 25% of the HER2 overexpressive breast cancer patients respond to the treatment, suggesting that uh, there is a primary resistance of uh, breast cancer to, to this antibody. And uh, uh, another fact that is if the uh, uh, if the patient initially responded to tritutumab treatment, eventually uh, some of these patients will develop uh, relapse and metastasis of the cancer, but that happens, the antibody no longer works, suggesting that uh, uh, the cancer, actually the tumor, developed uh, uh, acquired resistance. So both the primary resistance and the primary resistance Account for this actually became a major clinical uh, challenge for uh, the tritutumab treatment of uh, high HER2 breast cancer. And uh, so the the question we ask is uh, uh, so what's the mechanism that uh, uh, a breast cancer develops resistance, both primary and uh, acquired resistance to the tritutumab treatment? So one observation we, uh, we know in the cancer field is that is when tumor uh, progresses, uh, the tumor mark environment uh, accumulate uh, MMPs. These are matrix metalloproteases that we know that can cleave antibody uh, at the head region. And uh, so, uh, so, uh, so we ask the question, so maybe this uh, accumulation of MMPs might, be, uh, might play a role is acquired uh, also a uh, primary resistance of uh, of the uh, of the antibody, the uh, for 
harder to especially breast cancer. So let's uh, take a, a back of uh, uh, to review antibody proteolytic cleavage of antibodies. So in laboratory, we know that uh, we can use the plant protease papain. That's actually protease uh, produced the papaya. That can cleave the antibody as the upper H. You notice the uh, uh, the uh, upstream of the two-thousand bud is the H region that links the antibodies together. And this gives us the five fragment. We use this in laboratory all the time as a reagent. Uh, similarly, uh, the antibody can be cleaved by uh, the mammalian protease pepsin at the lower head of the antibody. That's the downstream of the two that suffered bud that gives you the FAB2 fragment. So we use that also uh, for uh, different, uh, 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 you know, as a reagent for different studies. So if you review the kinetics of the enzymatic cleavage antibody, the cleavage of the first strand of the heavy chain is very fast. So if we draw the two heavy chains are identical, but once the one strand is cleaved, the second strand actually is, is resistant cleavage. So the cleavage, of course, if you incubate the antibody with the protease long enough, you will achieve complete cleavage. So this is suggesting that the hedge region of the molecule is critical. We know structurally uh, the uh, hedge region is very flexible. That's that give you the flexibility of the antibody can engage its antigens. And this is also a region that uh, because of the flexibility of the hedge region, uh, we cannot crystallize actually uh, the entire intact antibody molecule. So most of the antibody Crystal structures are based on Fab fragment or Fab two. Um, so the uh, so the head region is almost like the Achilles heel of the antibody is sensitive to proteolytic cleavage because of the structural uh, flexibility. So it turns out that uh, um, uh, uh, in literature, uh, um, uh, MMPs such as MMPs two, three, seven, nine, twelve. 13, they can all cleave antibodies in the H region uh, at very specific sites. And we also know some of the proteins such as MAP7, MAP9, uh, 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 you know, poor uh, prognosis uh, markers for uh, tumor progression. And, uh, um, And uh, so here, uh, 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 my collaborator, uh, Joshua Joshi, uh, uh, in a uh, um, uh, PS paper at uh, 209, showed uh, the hedge region of the antibody. So hedge actually is uh, very defined. This is rgg H, about 90 amino acids. You notice the two cysts that's responsible for the two sulfur bond that link the two heavy chains together. And any uh, protease cleavage side downstream to the suffered bond give you the Fab2 fragment. Upstream of the two the suffered bond give you the Fab fragment. Also, you notice uh, uh, number six cleavage side number six. That's between two Lucy. Uh, that's actually can cleaved by pepsin, so give you the uh, the Fab2 fragment that overlaps with the cleavage side of MAP7. So one of the major uh, 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 tumor uh, uh, progression related uh, uh, proteases, MAP7. So in the laboratory, uh, we can generate uh, uh, this antibody head cleaved, the single head cleaved antibody. So on the, on the right panel, you see the intact your know, CAR2, you see the intact tractor map, which is IgG1. And if it's protein, if the IgG was proteolytic cleaved by uh, uh, the protease, a uh, single cleavage, so we name this uh, SC IgG1. SC stands for single cleaved IgG1 tritutu map. So after the, 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 the cleavage of the first strand of the IgG uh, at the H, the, the antibody still stay intact because the CH3 of the antibody uh, 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 still has uh, uh, they're together uh, through uh, the Nabi Ho um, uh, mechanism, also other 
not converted uh, uh, bond. So we use these reagents. We did a cell body experiment. In the A panel, you notice that uh, uh, both the intact antibody tritutumab and the single cleaved tritutumab, they can bind uh, the high HER2 expression cancer cell BT474 with equal affinity. You say the uh, EB, you can say the body curves can overlap. So that's you that uh, the single head cleavage did not compromise the fab portion of the molecule that engages HER2 receptor or cancer cells. And uh, 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 similarly, uh, you, uh, uh, you, uh, um, Cell inhibition in vitro assay, um, uh, in panel D in the middle, you see that both the intact antibody and the single clinical antibody can inhibit about 15% of cell growth. Uh, so you take this cell in the same panel as the left, you see both antibodies can uh, inhibit uh, HER2 phosphorylation, AKT phosphorylation, and uh, ERK phosphorylation. Suggesting again, the single cleavage did not compromise the fat portion of the antibody that engages the HER2 signaling, so blocking HER2 immediate uh, signaling. And uh, the, another experiment we tested uh, the impact of the head cleavage on uh, the antibody's ability to bind to different uh, FSA gamma receptors, as I mentioned earlier. FSA powder molecule can engage uh, the FSA gamma receptors or immune cells. You notice the panel B and the panel C, uh, the cleavage of the antibody of tritutumab, uh, you abolished uh, the antibody's ability to engage the FSA gamma receptor 2A and the receptor 3A. And I want to point out that uh, receptor 3A is the major FC gamma receptor on uh, NK cells that are responsible for uh, 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 ADCC and ADCP. That's the antibody dependent to cellular cytotoxicity and uh, uh, antibody mediated uh, 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 phagocytosis, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, so in panel D, we did a in vitro ADCC assay. In the use assay, we take a, a, a cancer cell, in this case, the HER2 overexpression SKOV3 cancer cell line. You mix it with the immune factor cell, this human PBMC. Then you add uh, the intact tritutumab that can mediate about 80% of the cell killing. That's both the ADCC and ADCP. But if you cleave the antibody at the head region, use the single cleaved IgG1 tritutumab, you actually lost the, uh, the ADCC activity. Again, suggesting that uh, the cleavage of antibody, you uh, abolished uh, uh, the immune uh, FSA mediated immune effect function. This is a, can contribute to its lack of body to FSA gamma 3 receptor uh, immune cells. So you put these antibodies into a simple uh, xenograph model where you take a high HER2 expression breast cancer cell line BT474 and uh, you treat with uh, uh, the other type control antibody as you would expect the tumor will grow. If you treat with intact uh, tritutumab, you say the tumor will be blocked. But if you treat with the single cleaved tritutumab, the tumor inhibition efficacy is somewhere in between. So in this case, we, uh, we were able to dissect the mode of action of tritutumab, which 60% of efficacy came from the FSA mediated effect function, and 40% came from uh, uh, the HER2 uh, signaling inhibition. And the ex vivo study of the tumor sample showed that both antibodies can uh, downregulate HER2 uh, receptor level uh, blocks uh, the phosphorylation of HER2, AKT, and ERK. Again, suggesting that uh, the, uh, the H cleaved antibody is capable of engaging the HER2 receptor and blocks uh, its signaling. 
that's actually account for about 40% of the efficacy of the antibody. Um, so what we, uh, uh, in a therapeutic setting, uh, is we can do is uh, to engineer antibodies uh, that is resistant to proteolytic cleavage. So this is actually an active uh, uh, field. Uh, uh, so Josh and Josh is, uh, is uh, building the platform that uh, uh, actually tritumab or any other antibodies uh, can be uh, 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 constructed with hit uh, proteolytic uh, resistance. Another mechanism we can uh, we can overcome this proteolytic cleavage in the clinical setting is that uh, uh, we can generate an antibody that recognizes the cleavage site. So this uh, uh, this uh, we call this uh, um, uh, this uh, this uh, antibody recognizes the cleavage site will provide a intact FC that can rescue the loss of FC factor function. So we could call this antibody uh, a rescue antibody. You can imagine uh, to generate this uh, uh, this uh, 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 this proteolytic cleavage antibody, we need uh, uh, this created uh, neo epitope. So this minor, minor difference between utah antibody and the cleavage antibody uh, present a challenge to generate the best reagent. So uh, so this was actually Josh Josh uh, collaboration with Epitomics, now part of Abicam. So we tried uh, antibody uh, from uh, mouse abdomen from uh, fish library and all kinds of sources. In that, with the rabbit, uh, uh, rabbit map actually give us the, the best antibody that can, uh, uh, can uh, distinguish this minute difference between uh, this cleaver antibody also the, uh, and from the intact antibody. So on the right, you can tell that uh, uh, if the uh, antibody got cleaved, so this rescue antibody can provide the intact FSA, can engage the immune cell, so can rescue the ADCC, ADCP activities. So we did a, a, a in vivo experiment. So on the left panel, you see the protein, uh, 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 the other type of control again, it says the uh, tumor grow. But if you treat with the intact antibody, tritutumab, so the efficacy is somewhere in between, because this time we use the cashew cell line that overexpress the protease. So the, so the antibody, uh, the tritutumab actually got cleaved, so they have a partial efficacy. But if you construct a tritutumab with a proteolytic resistant H, then you say you restore uh, the 100% uh, uh, tumor inhibition. I use the uh, right panel, so this time we use the rescue antibody. Uh, if you uh, if you take the uh, uh, the rescue by the by the self has no efficacy, right? Because it does not engage the HER2 receptor. But if you uh, you give it the intact tritutumab with the proteolytic resist rescue antibody, you can get a 100% tumor inhibition. So actually, this time uh, first time you uh, you vivo study, we know that both the tritutumab uh, proteolytic uh, 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 cleavage resistant former antibody can resist to proteolytic cleavage, give you 100% uh, uh, tumor inhibition efficacy. Also, the rescue approach can do the same. So this is this uh, now published picture to show you that uh, if you overexpress, uh, if you overexpress uh, 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 prote uh, protease in uh, high HER2 catch the cell line, uh, you say the, uh, uh, the tumor grow, grows uh, so much bigger, and uh, suggesting that uh, uh, this proteolytic cleavage of autoantibody play a role in the, uh, in the controlling of tumor growth. This is basically the vision of, uh, uh, of uh, the uh, uh, so-called humoral immunity. So this uh, also happens in the uh, cash cell line setting. So in this experiment, we know that uh, uh, high HER2 expression cash cell lines, such as SKV3, SKBR3, BT4074, can cleave the antibody at the head region. But the low HER2 expression cash cell line, MCF7, for example, cannot. So this suggests that the cleavage 
uh, of antibody need uh, has antibody actually engage uh, at least in proximity to the to the cancer cell surface. Uh, every row proteases like AMP7, AMP9, they are secreted proteases, but this state is a cell matrix, that's why they call it the matrix uh, proteases. And the cleavage of, uh, of antibodies also, uh, also happens in the clinic setting. In this case, we, uh, uh, this is a, a breast cancer patient who's a uh, HER2 uh, positive. So she was treated with uh, uh, Tratutumab neoadjuvant for six months, followed by surgery. And uh, then we uh, asked the uh, antibody Tratutumab from this patient sample and showed that uh, extensive hedge cleavage uh, in this patient uh, showed that, uh, uh, validated that uh, hedge cleavage does happen in the clinical setting. And uh, uh, in a clinical study, we, we took about uh, over 100 uh, cancer patients and we show uh, uh, the uh, uh, proteinous cleavage of antibodies uh, is, uh, uh, occurs in the tumor samples, but not in normal tissue. Um, and uh, uh, in the panel F, you can tell that the uh, cleavage of antibodies are uh, more uh, 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 detected in tumor tissue, not in plasma. As I told you earlier, uh, cleavage antibody actually needs the antibody to engage the cancer cell because the matrix proteases are not uh, uh, secreted to the plasma. And uh, uh, also in this experiment, we correlated uh, uh, the expression of MAP9 at, uh, at uh, uh, so you say MAP9 is A panel uh, overexpressed in the tumor samples, not in the matched normal tissue. And in panel B, uh, there's a strong correlation, partial correlation, between MAP9 expression at the level of uh, single H antibody cleavage. At uh, uh, in panel A, we also notice that uh, triple negative press cancer tend to have more antibody cleavage than the ER positive and PR positive cancer or the HER2 positive breast cancer patients. This might explain why triple negative breast cancer are very aggressive uh, uh, cancer types, and so far there's no uh, good therapies for uh, uh, triple negative breast cancer. At uh, panel B, uh, we also observed that uh, 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 single hedge cleave antibody uh, 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 multi-tentable is uh, uh, leaf node uh, metastasized uh, breast cancer than localized tumor suggesting that uh, single head cleavage is associated with uh, uh, tumor uh, progression and metastasis, also correlated with uh, uh, the MAP9 and other MAP expression and metastasis. So to summarize uh, uh, what we have learned here is that uh, uh, tratutumab uh, 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 in part rely on its efficacy effect function for its, uh, um, uh, uh, for its uh, efficacy, such as ADCC that kill, kills cancer cell. But during tumor progression, you have uh, accumulation of uh, metalloproteases such as AMPs. These proteases such as AMP9 can cleave the tritutumab in the head region. This will compromise the FC mediated effector function have a loss of ADCC and ADCP. This uh, uh, led to cancer cell survival and uh, lead result to uh, tritutumab resistance. So to, uh, uh, um, uh, to, to conclude that the antibodies are uh, susceptible, uh, susceptible to limited proteinated cleavage in tumor mark environment, and the single cleavage antibody uh, demonstrated in the tratutumab example uh, at the head region uh, uh, renders the human IgG1 autotype dysfunctional with regard to cell killing functions such as ADCC and ADCP. And uh, uh, so even though we have uh, 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 autoantibodies that can complement the uh, cleaved antibody, but that's not sufficient to prevent the cancer from happening in, you know, uh, in certain uh, populations. 
So the, the idea of a supplementation of anti-antibody immunity by vaccination or by drug, drug uh, administration of appropriate uh, antibodies that can restore uh, cell clearance by clear antibody could potentially uh, become a, a, a viable therapeutic uh, options uh, for both uh, uh, cancer and infectious disease. In this, uh, in this webinar, I don't have time to talk about uh, uh, you know uh, for uh, this, uh, this potential application for uh, for uh, bacterial infection, but uh, today we focus on cancer. Uh, finally, I want to acknowledge that this is a collaboration between the uh, University of Texas, the Texas uh, Security Institute, and uh, 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 also my collab uh, clinical collaborator, uh, Dr. Annalise Gonzalez, and also uh, um, collaboration with Joshua uh, Joshua, uh, um, uh, who provide the funding, also uh, the you know knowledge and the platform to make this possible. And uh, finally, the funding sources uh, for this project. So with that, I now turn over to Carol, who is an IBCAM scientist, who will uh, introduce you some of the IBCAM antibody technologies. Carol. Great. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Karan Sharma, and I'm a product manager for the RabMab antibody range here at ABCAM. Firstly, I want to thank Dr. An for sharing his research and presentation with us today. And while you're thinking of questions to ask, I wanted to take a few moments to talk about the RabMab antibody platform, which Dr. An utilized to develop the novel antibodies discussed in this presentation, and how the same technology may be useful for you the next time you plan an experiment. The main points of antibody quality that we focus on are specificity, sensitivity, and consistency. I want to go through each of these points and share with you how we address them through novel technologies, platforms, and techniques. So the first one we'll start with is specificity. We select the most appropriate application based on the particular protein targeted, and we use a combination of approaches to ensure the specificity of our antibodies. Our standard screening and validation program includes ELISA's, Western blot, immunoprecipitation, immunohistochemistry, immunocytochemistry, and flow cytometry testing. We then supplement these validations with more powerful techniques like IP mass spectrometry, peptide array testing, and gene editing technologies. We are constantly searching for better methods to evaluate specificity, and we have continued to adopt more advanced technologies as they become available. An example of one of these adoptions is the use of knockout cell lines provided by Horizon Discovery. The knockout initiative relies on CRISPR-Cas9 generated human knockout cell lines that allow for a haploid cellular model and offer a true negative control with which to test antibody specificity. Haploid models are easier to generate than modified diploid cell lines as only one allele needs to be targeted to obtain a loss of function phenotype. We grade these knockout samples in Western blot with the following results. First one is specific, which means that there is signal in the wild type and not in the knockout samples. Second is recognizing the target alongside other proteins. This is where the signal is in the wild type and not in the knockout samples at the region of interest, but there is signal observed in both samples at various molecular weights. And then thirdly, unspecific. This is where there is no or limited reduction of signal in the knockout compared to the wild type sample at the region of interest. All of this data is uploaded to the individual data sheets of the products and onto our public website. Antibodies that are specific or recognize their target alongside other proteins remain available for our customers. Unspecific antibodies are removed from the catalog and our customers are notified. Right now, Western blot is our primary validation method. ICC testing is also carried out where ICC is deemed important to the antibody or protein target. The next point in antibody quality is sensitivity. Rabbit monoclonal antibodies are generated on the same principles as mouse monoclonals, but take advantage of the rabbit's ability to mount an immune response against a much broader range of compounds. The rabbit immune system optimizes affinity by mechanisms that are more efficient than those of mice and other rodents. Rabbits can be used to produce these high affinity antibodies even against antigens that are not immunogenic in mice. On average, we've seen that rabbit monoclonal antibodies have 10 to 100 times higher affinity for a target antigen than mouse monoclonal antibodies. Rabbit antibodies are also better at distinguishing subtle differences, such as epitope variations like modifications, mutations, and conformational changes due to the larger and more diverse B-cell repertoire. 
RabMab antibodies also combine the best properties of monoclonals with the most desirable attributes of rabbit polyclonal antibodies. The figure on the right shows serial sections of human tonsil tissue where IHC was performed. In figure A, a leading mouse monoclonal against KI67 was used on this tissue at a 1 to 200 dilution. In figure B, our rabbit monoclonal against KI67 was used at a 1 to 1,000 dilution. As you can see, at a higher dilution, you still get higher sensitivity with the rabbit monoclonal antibody. <clears throat> After we have confirmed specificity and the appropriate sensitivity for a particular assay, we need to make sure that these results remain consistent. To generate a recombinant antibody, genes encoding the antibody heavy and light chains can be cloned into a vector that will permit their expression in more robust host cell lines. From here, the resulting recombinant antibodies can be isolated and purified, just as though they had been produced using a hybridoma. Once sequenced, recombinant antibodies are not subject to loss of activity caused by sequence drift or loss of yield, both of which can affect hybridomas if they are poorly maintained. Once an antibody has been cloned, recombinant antibody production provides a scalable, fully in vitro system to consistently produce antibodies that are identical from batch to batch. The engineered nature of recombinant antibodies also makes it easier to improve both antibody specificity and sensitivity if required. More than 90% of the RabMabs on our catalog are recombinant rabbit monoclonals, thus offering improved sensitivity, consistency, and reproducibility. The image on the right is IHC analysis of human non-small cell lung cancer tissue, uh, stained with our rabbit monoclonal against PDL1 clone 288. In figure A, this tissue is stained with just an rabbit monoclonal IgG isotype control, where we show no staining. Figures B through F are, are of the uh, one PDL1 rabbit monoclonal antibody, but each figure is a different batch of that clone. And as you can see, the batches show consistent staining results. Today, we have over 10,000 recombinant rabbit monoclonal antibodies on our catalog. Each of these clones can be provided in customizable buffer formulations and directly conjugated formats. We also provide custom RabMab services to over 700 universities, institutes, and companies globally, and have developed more than 300 clones for IHC pathology. For those researchers in the immuno-oncology field, we have many resources in the form of webinars, protocols, posters, and validated reagents. To learn more about these, you can visit www.abcam.com slash tag slash cancer. An example of one of these rabbit monoclonal antibodies that has gone through each stage of the antibody quality procedures is Clone 288, anti-human PD-L1 antibody. This antibody shows no cross-reactivity with PD-L2 and has been validated for use in flow cytometry, IHC, and Western blot. The clone has also been validated and commonly used auto stainers. In addition, we have a full set of ancillary reagents to use alongside clone 288 when carrying out IHC or Western blot. Recombinant rabbit monoclonal antibodies are incorporated into each of our assay technologies, including simple step ELISAs, matched antibody pair kits, and fireplex immunoassays. Simple step kits are, are validated with re relevant biological samples so you know these will work with your specimens and give ELISA results in just 90 minutes compared to the usual four hour standard time. Matched antibody pair kits provide just the essential reagents, allowing you to use your own custom protocols for ELISA based assays. And Fireplex immunoassays allow you to assay multiple proteins such as cytokines simultaneously right down to the picogram per mil concentration. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Please visit the following links if you'd like to learn more about anything discussed. I'd like to now hand it over to our moderator, Jessica, for any questions that may have been received. Wonderful. Thank you, Karen, and thank you, Dr. Ahn, for your presentations today. A quick reminder for our audience on how to submit questions. Simply type them in the Q&A box found by, circling, excuse me, found by clicking on the green Q&A button at the lower left-hand side of the presentation window. Dr. Ahn and Curran will now answer as many questions as time permits. And Curran, I'm already seeing several questions in the queue. Great. Okay, Dr. Ahn. So the first question is, how would a vaccine approach work to rescue the proteolytically cleaved autoantibodies? 
Yes, so uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, we have uh, 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 we have auto antibodies actually targeting uh, tumor sources antigens. These antibodies is uh, part of our immune surveillance that provide cancer from happening. So, uh, but these uh, uh, these uh, uh, these uh, antibodies are uh, sometimes not enough to uh, to uh, to rescue all the uh, cleaved antibodies. So, what we can do is uh, uh, for uh, you know, cancer patients, we can immunize uh, uh, the patients with uh, the hate cleaved uh, peptide, that's a uh, peptide. So we, what we hope is that we will generate antibodies against this uh, cleaved site. So this antibody, this, uh, this uh, 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 immunization generated antibodies will be able to rescue the cleaved autoantibodies. This, uh, uh, we are, our lab is actively working in this cash arena, but uh, 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 we rather have papers published. Uh, uh, this actually works, the immunization project works in a uh, uh, bacterial setting that where uh, this immunization can generate antibodies, rescue cleave antibodies uh, to, for uh, staph aureus infection. Okay. And the next question is, can you inhibit the MMPs to prevent antibody cleavage in the tumor microenvironment? Yeah, that's a good question. The uh, MMPs, we have uh, in human at least we have uh, 26 different MMPs. MMPs are uh, uh, they play a primary, uh, very important of biological physiological functions in the uh, in, in normal function of the uh, of the mammalian system. So inhibition of MMPs. Uh, uh, could uh, have a uh, uh, potential, you know, side effects. And I would say that is uh, uh, MAPs. Uh, there's overlapping activities. So it's very difficult to isolate uh, uh, specific MAP uh, inhibitors. Um, in fact, that uh, in the medical field, uh, you know, people have tried to make a small molecule MAP inhibitors, uh, but uh, due to the lack of select, uh, specificity and selectivity, uh, this approach was not very uh, productive. So uh, that said, uh, there is a push for uh, actually generate antibody inhibitors for specific MMPs. And uh, I would imagine uh, uh, with antibody technology uh, devices such as rapid antibody from uh, uh, B cell pool, uh, that we might be able to get uh, very unique specific antibodies specific for these individual MMPs. So that's uh, uh, potentially one of the options, yes. Okay, and the next question is also involving MMPs as well. Um, are the MMPs in the tumor microenvironment free in liquid phase and ex extracellular space or on the tumor cell membranes? Yeah, as I discussed uh, in my lecture, uh, MMPs are a secret, mostly secreted proteins, uh, except uh, WAD, that's MMP40, that's a, m a memory bot. Uh, if it's secreted protein, uh, protein MMP such as MMP7, 9, 3, they are uh, actually stays in the cell matrix. That's why they call it uh, matrix metalloproteases. Uh, you can detect uh, uh, MMPs uh, uh, in circulation, but it's a very low concentration. They are mostly not functional, and uh, this due to the you know cell degradation uh, uh, products. So that's why um, uh, you ever uh, I showed one uh, experiment that uh, cleavage of uh, uh, M, uh, antibodies, you need to have uh, the antibody actually attached to the cell. So uh, in that experiment, as you recall, uh, uh, if you keep it, you keep it antibody with the cancer cell lines that overexpress HER2, such as BT474, SKBR3, you saw cleavage, uh, time dependent cleavage antibody. But if you incubate the antibody with MC7, that's a breast cancer cell line, but uh, do not express her to that high level, we do not say cleavage. So that means the cleavage uh, need to uh, have the antibody actually proximity or uh, attached to the cell or uh, attached to the tumor surface in the, in the clinical setting. Okay. And then the next question is, would there be any negative effect of entirely suppressing IgG proteolysis? Uh, yeah, I think there's a reason uh, that um, antibodies are cleaved in the hate region. Uh, um, we do know uh, 
uh, evolutionarily, is there any advantage for, for this mechanism? It could be uh, just a side effect that there are MAPs uh, uh, in the tumor tissue or, t uh, or use even normal tissue uh, uh, that the antibody attached to the tissue uh, that got cleaved, that antibody got degraded. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, if you inhibit uh, entirely the protein cleavage for the MAP activities, you will have side effects. But the therapeutic approach we are proposing, such as uh, such as uh, uh, the vaccine approach to generate uh, uh, head cleavage specific antibodies to rescue the cleavage, or supplementation of uh, uh, antibodies that can rescue uh, the cleavage antibody, will not uh, uh, entirely uh, suppress the IgG uh, paralysis in vivo. So. Uh, uh, so, uh, so we do the uh, for because we're not completely uh, shut down the system, so do expect a uh, major side effect. But this will has to be tested in the clinic as a therapeutic approach to figure out exactly if this is uh, safe or not. Okay. And the next question is: What is the advantage of using an antibody against the cleaved therapeutic AB instead of engineering the therapeutic antibody to be protease resistant? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, if uh, uh, there's two uh, two types of uh, antibodies that we uh, we depend on to help us to to uh, to fight against cancer. One is actually our natural immune system. So we have antibodies in circulation targeting uh, tumor associated antigens, so-called autoantibodies. We actually we can identify antibodies targeting HER2. So these antibodies are. Uh, part of our immune surveillance system to overcome, you know, uh, but uh, uh, so these antibodies, they are not uh, resistant to cleavage. So to rescue, to boost our own immune system, so we can uh, give uh, uh, this rescue antibody uh, as a supplemental to the system. This is similar to the PD-1, PD-L-1, CTO for immune inhibitory uh, receptor uh, antibodies to boost our T cells. So basically, we give some antibody to help to boost our T cells. The same thing here is uh, we, we add this uh, rescue antibody that can, uh, can boost our uh, auto uh, antibodies, uh, you know, immunity, uh, humoral immunity. Um, so the other uh, side of the coin, that is, we actually generate therapeutic antibodies, such as tatutumab, uh, to, uh, to fight against cancer. You don't set it. We generally can generate a proteinic resistant antibody, which I already showed you one example. Uh, uh, so uh, to summarize, uh, for superior antibody, we engineer proteinic resistant uh, uh, cleavage antibody, and for to rescue the auto antibody of all immune humoral immunity, we give uh, the rescue antibody. Okay. And then <coughs> the next question is: Are all isoforms of antibodies sensitive to MMP9? Yeah, that's a very good question. Actually, the, uh, M, the RGG1 other type is the mo mostly sensitive to proteinic cleavage. For example, RGG2 is less so. This explains why. This probably uh, is uh, I already told you. Uh, the the H RGG1 other type is uh, is the workhorse of our immune system to f to engage the ADCC, ADCP, you know, CMC, uh, CDC. And uh, to, for bacterial clears, uh, fighting against uh, tumor cells for uh, viruses. Uh, so that's why the IgG1 H is mostly sensitive to cleavage. This is like the Achilles heel. So this is basically the, uh, the antibody. You can imagine antibody has a, it's such a large molecule where you already have this 90 amino acids that's sensitive to all kinds of proteinated cleavage. Um, in fact, we know that. Uh, Bacterial proteases can cleave the antibody in the heat region. And there are those proteases that are various factors. If you remove these proteases from bacteria, they no longer become pathogens. So, uh, so same thing, we can consider tumor cells as a bacteria. They are pathogens. Tumor cells are not normal cells, they are pathogens. So the tumor cells to survive, they need to actually have mechanisms to evade this antibody immunity. So therefore, they develop these uh, proteases which can target uh, IgG1. Uh, uh, okay. 
And then I believe this is going to be the final question of the webinar. Uh, why not alter the antibody sequence in the hinge region? Yeah, so this is the same question which I already answered. Uh, uh, so we actually already engineered, this already published, we engineered the antibody hinge region that resists to all kinds of proteinic cleavage. And uh, in, that, in that example, we showed that uh, uh, if you uh, give this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, we have a cancer cell line that is engineered to overexpress protease, proteases. And you treat that tumor with the tritutumab, for example, uh, the, the, the tumor can readily cleave your antibody. So the antibody gives you a partial efficacy, because the antibody still, still can inhibit the uh, HER2 signaling. But if I engineer the resistant version of the tritutumab, it's a completely resistant cleavage. They give you the 100% tumor inhibition. So that's actually a, a, a platform we hope that eventually will become a, 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 a antibody also type, which is resistant to hit cleavage, uh, will be used as a platform for a therapeutic antibody design. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. An, and thank you, Karen. If there are no more questions, I would just like to, again, once again, thank you for both of your presentations. Dr. An, do you have any final comments? Uh, no more. I thank you, uh, uh, you know, the audience for the wonderful questions. They are very, uh, this is exactly what uh, we hope this approach might uh, pay out as a therapeutic approach of fighting against not only cancer, but infectious disease. Maybe next time I can uh, talk about uh, the application of this approach for uh, fighting infection. Uh, which uh, uh, is equally exciting and important as uh, against the cashier. Thank you so much for your time. Wonderful. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the audience today for joining us and for their interesting questions. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Abcam, for underwriting today's edital, excuse me, educational webcast as well. At this time, a survey should have popped up on your screen. We would appreciate you taking uh, two minutes to answer this survey to help us further plan um, future webinars. For your information, this webcast can be viewed on demand through November 2017. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. And we encourage you to share the email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live webinar. So with that, I'd like to thank you once again for joining us today, and good luck with your research. <laughs>